Good morning slash afternoon, everybody, or good afternoon. Um, yeah, I got nothing funny. I'm sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> hope we're all doing well. I hope we're all ready for our next Hizzy lesson. This lesson, we're going to be focusing on how the ancient Egyptian farmers lived. We're going to be looking at what they did to farm, the different techniques that they used, and how the Nile River helped them grow and maintain their crops. So our learning intentions and our success criteria is up on the, I was going to say the board, but the screen. So we've got, I can understand what farmers did in ancient Egypt. I can explain how the Nile River helped them to grow crops. And our success criteria. So together we're going to be reading, together, we're going to be reading through our notes. We're going to be looking at all of the different notes together. And I'm going to be doing my best to explain them. There are going to be some questions. That I'm going to give to you guys throughout the reading through, throughout the read through, sorry. And at the end, we're going to have a diary entry. So I'm going to just skip right down to the bottom to start off with. Because I'm going to try and give you guys a bit of a hand with the final task. Well, where's my mouse? What are we doing? There we go. So I would love it if you guys could copy out these five questions into your workbooks. These five questions are going to have all of the different bits of information that we need to get ourselves ready for our diary entry. We're going to be taking our answers for these five questions and putting it together in a bit of a, like a story. Where do you live? Okay. Where does the farmer live? I'm sorry. <laughs> Where does the farmer live? What is the farmer growing? Where do you grow your crops? How do you lift your water out of the canal? And what animals do you have? So all of the yous here refer to you being a farmer in ancient Egypt. A diary entry is you putting yourself in the shoes of a character or of a person that we're focusing on. So let's say, for instance, um, you were writing a diary entry from the point of view of one of the Super Mario Brothers. I might say, Hi everybody, it's a me, Mario. Today, I found a mushroom and I grew and I could jump on turtles and throw them at blocks and make them break. I'm just going to say don't throw turtles at blocks. It's not as fun as, uh, as it seems in Mario. <laughs> but what we're going to do today is we're going to look at what, I'm going to reset a little bit there. We're going to look at what an ancient Egyptian farmer does. We're going to answer all of these questions. Where does he live? What does his house look like? What are they, what do they grow? So that when you're answering these questions, you can write it from you being one of the farmers. I'm an ancient, I'm a farmer in ancient Egypt. You will not believe what happened to me today. I woke up out of my... What kind of house will he have? And is it a straw, stick, or brick house? Boom, boom, psh. No, he's not one of the three little pigs. Not all my jokes are lame, just a lot of them. <laughs> okay, so if you need a little bit more time to copy that down, pause the video, come back, and... Yeah, pause the video. You can look at it at your own time. Okay. So we're going to read through this information together. We're going to look at some of the pictures that we have. If I'm not looking directly at the camera and it sort of feels a bit disjointed, I apologize. I've got my screen mirrored up onto my TV and it gives me another thing to look at. So, yeah. The people of ancient Egypt grew everything they needed to eat. Why do you think they grew everything that they needed to eat? Because we don't grow everything that we need to eat. I know that in my backyard I don't have a gigantic, um, you know, salad garden. I don't have 50 tomato plants so that I have tomatoes all week or, or what have you. Most of my groceries come from Coles or Woolworths. In ancient Egypt, they didn't really have a Coles or Woolworths. The farmers might have sold some of what they grew to the other people in the Egyptian society. So the farmers here grew what they needed to eat and grew what the other people in their, in their area needed to eat. Who were the farmers in ancient Egypt? 
The Pharaoh got the rich peasants to do the, to do the farm work on the rich lands. So looking here, if you remember, a couple of lessons ago, we looked at the social pyramid, which had the Pharaoh up the top. And as we got further and further down the pyramid, people were less and less Im important. And the richer somebody was, the more important they were in that society. So he would get the rich peasants or the most rich out of all of the poor people to work the farm on the rich lands. Now, this might mean that they got a little bit more money or they were taken care of a little bit better. Most villagers were farmers. Farmers lived in towns too, along with craft workers or people that made things, traders, people that bought and sold things, and other workers and their families. So here we can see an ancient Egyptian artwork. We've got the um, Egyptian person over here with the two animals. And I might be wrong, but they look like antelopes. At least I think they're antelopes. My animal <laughs> marking skills aren't the best, so if they're not, I'm sorry. What crops did the Egyptian farmers grow? Egyptians grew crops such as wheat, barley, vegetables, figs, melons, pomegranates, and vines. So wheat and barley are kind of like grain crops. When we look at what our staple foods are, we have a lot of breads and a lot of potatoes, that which, that's what makes up a lot of our diet. And when we look at some other areas around the world, places like Asia have a lot of rice, and that is one of the staple foods in their diets. And when we look at, um, at ancient Egypt, they had wheat and barley as well, which is very similar to us. A range of vegetables. Figs are a type of fruit. Melons, so we've got watermelons, rock melons, honeydew. Pomegranates are another type of fruit. And vines. They also grew flax, which was made into linen. And linen is kind of like a fabric. It's a bit of a soft, flowy, breathable fabric. The most important crop was grain. The ancient Egyptians used grain to make bread, porridge, and beer. Grain was the first crop they grew after the inundation, which is the flooding season. So we're going to write a small note on inundation in just a little bit. Once the grain was harvested, they grew vegetables such as onions, leeks, cabbages, beans, cucumbers, and lettuce. So I know that one of the questions asked, what foods did the farmers grow? And you might want to come back to this paragraph. The first question, I'm going to push back a little bit, asked, where do the farmers live? Um, so the farmers lived in towns alongside the craft workers, traders, and other workers. So these are, might be the answers to our first two questions. Farmers planted fruit trees and vines along paths to give shade as well as fruit. Now, before we move on, I did say we we're going to write a note on inundation. Inundation. I'm going to move up and give myself a little bit more room. Inundation is the flooding season. This is not where. This is the time where the Nile River flooded. It's brought down black nutrient rich soil which helped the plants grow. That isn't grow. There we are. Grow. I would really appreciate it if you guys could write this one sentence and word. So inundation being the word, this being the sentence into your workbooks. I'm going to ask you to pause the video because I am going to move on. This is all we need in our workbooks so far after the questions. Where did the farmers grow their crops? The Egyptians grew their crops along the banks of the River Nile, on the rich black soil or kemet, which was left behind after the yearly floods. 
the fertile soil was ideal to grow healthy crops. How many seasons were there in ancient Egypt? So we're going to go over this a little bit quickly. You don't have to remember all of the seasons. We just need to know that there are different times and different things might happen in the different seasons. So we have the Aket or the inundation, which is usually from June to September. And this is the flooding season. No farming was done at this time as all of the fields were flooded. Instead, the farmers worked for the Pharaoh, building pyramids or temples. Some of the time was spent mending or fixing their tools and looking after animals. Peret, which is from October, so right after September, October to February. This is the growing season. In October, the floodwaters receded or went back, leaving behind a layer of rich black soil. This fertile soil was then ploughed and seeded. Now, we need to remember that the ancient Egyptians didn't have a lot of the tools that we have now. Our farmers might use tractors to plough their land. And what we mean by ploughing is that they break up, break up the top layer of soil to give the seed somewhere to go into. It gives the soil a little bit of air and makes it a bit softer and helps the plants grow out of it. So the ancient Egyptians used to use a lot of hand tools. So they would plough the fields with their own hands. Sometimes they would even um, put external tools on animals. So they would have an animal drag a plow and they would sort of aim it and uh, from behind and use that to break up the top layer of the soil. Then we have Shemu, which is from March to May. And this is the harvesting season. This is where fully grown crops had to be cut down and harvested and removed before the Nile flooded again. It was also the time to repair the canals ready for the next flood. Why was it important that they harvested or took out all of their plants before the Nile River flooded again? If they left everything, everything would either be washed away or it would be drowned. And with the canals, these are, if you excuse me momentarily, I'm going to do another one of my screen change keyboard removal things. Excuse whatever I've drawn up here that comes up. <laughs> okay, so here we have the Nile River. Now, if you look on a map, it'll probably look exactly like that because I'm such an amazing illustrator that it will look exactly like that. So we might have some black soil over here where the river flooded to and over here where the river flooded to. Now, they didn't have taps to bring the water to their house. So what they would do is they would dig out little trenches. So they would dig, if we're looking at it head on, it was a bit of a scoop in the land, just like that. And it would help the, um, it would be used to bring the water from the river to wherever they led their canal. So they might lead it to a place where it makes it a bit easier for them to fetch water for their family, to drink, whoop, to drink, or to, um, to wash themselves with. So it worked kind of like a pipe that was led by gravity. That was meant to be blue. I don't know why it went off the blue, but okay, it's falling behind for some reason. There we go. It's going to stay black for now. <laughs> so this is what the canal looks like. This is what we mean when we're discussing um, the canals that the ancient Egyptians used. Okay, where were we? Yes, yeah, so it was the time where they um, repaired the canals ready for the next flood. So that, that way, the next time the water flooded through, their canals were prepared to take water to um, wherever the Egyptians needed it. What were the two main farming seasons? The word seasons is left, left out here, I'm sorry. And I've just taken my keyboard off, so I won't fix it right now. 
The main farming seasons were the growing and the harvesting season. So the growing, sorry, is when all of the crops were planted and the harvesting is when the, um, when the crops were cut and gathered. So we're going to focus on one of the things that was grown, this one being corn. Reapers cut the ripe corn with wooden sickles, um, which are edged with sharp flints. So, no, this picture doesn't have a sickle. A wooden sickle is kind of like, think back to some of the cartoons you've seen. You might see a grim reaper holding a long stick and on the end it has a curved blade. And they use that to cut down the, um, the branches of the corn so that they could collect it. Women and children followed behind the reapers to collect any fallen ears of corn. Cattle were used to trample o over the cut corn to remove the grain from all of the ears. So to get the um, little bits of the yellow grain off of the corn, they would use cows to step on it and to crush it to get all of those grains off. The grain was tossed into the air so that the breeze, the wind, blew away the light, useless chaff. So all of the bits that they didn't want were blown into another section. Here we can see an ancient Egyptian farmer using a plow on the back of an antelope. So he's got his stick dug into the ground to break up the land so that they have somewhere to put the seeds. And one of the women are following behind, throwing the seeds into the ground, giving them all of these different plants. What was the flooding season in ancient Egypt? Every June, the Nile flooded. This was known as the flooding season. During this time, the farmers would mend or fix their tools or make new ones. People would go fishing for food or extra money. What farming tools did they have in ancient Egypt? Ancient Egyptians had simple farming tools, such as winnowing scoops, hoes, rakes, flint-bladed sickles, and plows. Okay, so scoops were used to scoop up the land. Hoes. They are, I don't know if I can draw on this page, but we're going to find out together. Yes, we can. That's kind of what a hoe looks like. If you've played Minecraft, you know that it's used to break up the tops, uh, the top bit of the soil. Over here is a hoe that's connected to an animal. Flint bladed sickles. Okay, that should have come to a point. Like I said, I'm not really the best illustrator. There we go. And that's hidden behind the face cam. There we go. And that's what a flint bladed sickle looks like. Here we can see a farmer using a flint, uh, flint bladed sickle to cut down the, um, the corn stalks. And what flint is, it's a, um, a type of mineral. It's like a rock. So they used it because it was something that they could grind into a sharp point, a sharp edge. And they had both hand plows and plows pulled by oxen. And the plows were used to turn the soil. So I think I said antelope. I don't know why I said antelope because I know that that's... Anyway, oxen, here we go. <laughs> if you are yelling at me from home, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm not... I need to watch more Animal Planet. Another piece of equipment used by farmers was the shadow. See further down the page. So we're going to get there in a little bit. The majority of the tools were made out of were made entirely out of wood or a combination of wood and stone. However, some copper tools have also been found. So we we know that they got copper. I'm going to delete that part because I can't because I haven't got my keyboard connected. There we go. Is that going to work? No, it's not going to let me do it. There we go. <laughs> um, copper is a metal that you get from mixing two other elements together. Um, 
bronze and iron from memory. So we could only get copper when we have two other things, the bronze and the iron, and we can make them really, really hot so that they melt together and become a different type of metal. And it's much easier to use wood and stone, but they might not last as long as the copper tools. How did the Egyptian farmers water their crops? Once the floods receded or went back and the fields dried, the plants would wither and die. The mud that the Nile left behind needed lots of watering in the hot sun. Now, when we say hot sun, I tried to highlight that. There we go. When we say hot sun, we need to remember where um, Egypt is. It's in Africa, but it's also surrounded by desert. And we know that during the day, the desert gets extremely hot. The ancient Egyptians tried to trap as much flat. Sorry, I'm going to restart that sentence. The ancient Egyptians tried to trap as much flood water as possible. So they did not have to constantly get water from the river. So this is where they dug their canals out and tried to find pools of water that they could um, keep safe, that they could use to water their crops. <coughs> Sorry, I needed to clear my throat there. They built mud brick reservoirs to trap and hold water. They also had a network of irrigation canals that filled with water during the flood and were refilled from the reservoirs. So they had the river that led to canals, that led to little pools that might have led to crops over here, or even crops very close to the river, wherever they decided to grow them. How did they lift the water from the canals onto the land? To lift the water from a canal, they used a shaduf or a shaduf. A shaduf is a large pole balanced on a crossbeam. A rope and a bucket on one end and a heavy counterweight on the other. By pulling the rope, it lowered the bucket into the canal. The farmer then raised the bucket of water by pulling down on the weight. He then swung the pole around and emptied the bucket onto the field. So I'm going to try and zoom in just a little bit to give you guys a closer look at this picture. So we can see we have the weight on one end with a big beam and a little bucket. So they would drop the, the pull down on the rope to get the water fill, the bucket filled with water, lift it up and then walk it around to get it to, um, to use the water to water the crops. Here we can see another wall painting of the shaduf. Now I was right the first time, it is shaduf. It's a machine used to move water from a lower place to a higher place. What animals did the Egyptian farmers have? Animals were very important to the Egyptian farmers. Animals helped them with jobs like trampling in the seeds, pulling the plow, eating unwanted grain or wheat, and providing the Egyptians with food and drink. They kept animals such as cattle, goats, pigs, ducks, cows, and geese. So when we say trampling the seeds, you saw the um, female farmer throwing the seeds on the floor and the animals would step on these seeds to get them deeper into the ground. They would pull the plow using their strength to break up the land and they would eat unwanted grain or wheat. Things that they didn't want, the animals would eat them. And some of the animals would be, would be milked to give them milk. And some of them would be used for, uh, for their meat. And here we can see some of the different animals that the Egyptians had. A whole range of animals. I think there's an ostrich. A jackal. Yeah, that, that it might be an antelope, but I'm a bit uh, shy with calling another animal an antelope. <laughs> what other jobs did the peasants do in ancient Egypt? The peasants also hunted for antelope in the desert, beyond the hills, and they fished in the Nile. In ancient Egypt, for the most part, whatever job your father had, you had. If he was a farmer, most probably when you grew up, you would become a farmer. And if he was a soldier, 
you would likely grow up to be a soldier as well. In ancient Egypt, jobs were inherited, which, may, which means that the child gets what their parents have. So if a, a, their parent is a farmer, then they will be a farmer. On the other side of that, if your parent is the pharaoh, then you're probably going to be the pharaoh. When they die, of course. Farmers divided or planned out their time around the three seasons. The flooding, the growing, and the harvest season. The flooding season. So this is giving us a little bit more detail in the flooding season. Each spring, snow on the mountains would melt. The Nile River would flood. This was a very good thing. When the waters receded or came back, pushed back, sorry, they left behind fertile soil. Crops could easily be grown in this black, rich soil. The ancient Egyptians called this soil the gift of the Nile. Farming was not as easy as it might sound in ancient Egypt. Tools were simple. Cattle needed care to be useful. Snakes and jackals roamed the field. Farmers had to barter or trade many of their harvested crops for the things that they and their animals needed so that they could plant more crops. There was also a little chance of improving their life. Most of the time, if you were born a farmer, you would always be a farmer. And that's how things were done in ancient Egypt. So now we're going to have a look at our diary entry and our five questions. So, when we're looking at a diary entry, it's like we're writing or we're imagining someone write in their diary. If you guys have seen a lot of the, like the Disney Channel shows, um, I can't think of any right off the top of my head. But uh, you might see some of the characters write in their diary. Dear diary, today I went to school and Mr. Hosnia's head was so shiny that it made me go blind for a minute. Except in this situation, we're writing not from our perspective, but from somebody else's. We're pretending that we're somebody else. Dear diary, I'm a farmer in ancient Egypt. You won't believe what happened to me today. What I want you to do is I want you to take the information you have and answer these five questions in a diary entry. So you might say, it's a bit awkward typing on my keyboard like this. Bear with me one moment. There we go. So you might say, I went outside into the village where I live with my family. So where does the farmer live? In the village with his family. What are you growing? I went out to check on the crops. Full stop. The figs are growing well. You could set, also talk about all of the other crops that you're growing. Where do you grow your crops? On the black, nutrient-rich something. How do you lift water out of the canal? You might have to shaduf your own answer. What animals do you have? And we spoke about that a little while ago. What I want you guys to do, if you are stuck on any of the questions, please feel free to message me on our Google Classroom or send me an email. My best bit of advice to you, if you are a bit stuck, go back through the video, maybe rewatch it again, or look for the parts that you need to look at to help yourself answer the questions. Go back, flick back to something that you want to um, look at a little bit deeper. Or if you're feeling, one, I, I think, actually, I'm not going to offer that. If you are a little bit stuck, my advice is go on to Google and see what information you can find to answer these questions. In any case, I'm going to leave that to you guys. Thank you all for watching. 
If you need anything from me or any of your other teachers, please feel free to email us or message us. I hope you have a good day. I hope you um, get through the work and I'll see you later.